everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing three new summer DIYs that are all easy and budget friendly. Today's video is also a collaboration video where I'll be teaming up with seven of my DIY friends here on YouTube. Now let's get right into today's projects. Moving into the first DIY today, I'm using two of these plastic planner pots from Dollar Tree. I think they are super cute and have so much potential. I'm first starting out by painting both of my planners with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I did do two coats of this paint on both planners. I could have spray painted these, but I did not have a spray paint in the color that I wanted. So I just painted them by hand. After the paint was all dry, I then took my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle on a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I just very lightly painted this color around all of the grooves around the pots and then around the top and the bottom as well. Next it was time to put my two pots together. So I'm putting hot glue on the bottom side of my first pot and then I'm placing my second pot on top of that. For this project, I'm also going to be using this circle family sign from Dollar Tree. I'm not going to be using the side that says family, I'm using the back side. So as you'll see, I took off the little hanger and then peeled off the sticker that was on the back side. Once I had that all peeled off, I then painted my piece with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Castle. I did two coats of this paint, and as you can see, it's a little bit wet. I had a hard time getting my tag off. I don't have a heat gun, so I ended up using a little bit of water to help me out. After that castle color was all dry, I then took my plaster color from Waverly on a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I very lightly painted this color around all of the sides of my circle and then a little bit on the front of the circle as well, just to give it a distressed look. I'm also using this Home Sweet Home stencil that I got from Amazon last year. This one came in a pack of a bunch of 4th of July stencils, but I thought it would be great to use on this project. So I'm just placing the stencil on my circle, getting it all centered. And then I realized I need to tape my stencil down so it doesn't move around. So I just cut the edges of the stencil off so that I could tape my edges down. And I just placed painter's tape along the entire sides of the stencil, but then I also put it on those stars and anything that wasn't the words home sweet home because I did not want to accidentally get paint in those areas because I'm only going to be painting on the words home sweet home. The color I'm using to paint on my words is plaster from Waverly and I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint and I always like to build up my paint to prevent any bleed through underneath the stencil. Then once my paint has dried, I'm peeling off all of my painter's tape and my stencil. Now I'm attaching this piece to the top of my planner. I'm placing a hot glue around the outside edge of my circle and then just placing that on the top of my planner. To add a little bit of detail to my piece, I'm using some of these unfinished wood caps. I think that's what they're called. I'm not exactly sure their names, but I'm using a 16 of them for this project and I painted all of them with that same Waverly paint in plaster. Once the paint was all dry, I then started placing these little ball caps on the very top of my piece just to make sure that they're all spaced out the way I want them to be before I start gluing them down. Once I have them all spaced out, I just picked each one up, placed some hot glue on the bottom, and then placed it back down. My piece is all finished being put together, but I'm using some of this Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Protective Sealer to seal all my paint in, especially if I'm going to be using this piece outside. So I just gave my piece a few coats of this sealer to make sure that it will last and be protected. Here is my piece all finished. I think it turned out super cute and it was really easy to create. You could use it like I have it here as a decorative accent piece, or you could place a plant on it and use it as a plant stand. Before we get into the second project today, I do want to talk a little bit about today's collaboration. I'm teaming up with seven of my DIY friends here on YouTube for a summer on my mind hop. If you're not familiar with how a hop works, each one of us will have a link down in our description box that will link you to the next friends video. All of us are creating some really creative summer projects. So once you're done watching this video, I will have a link down in my description box to my good friend Lini from Crafty Lini. If you guys have not seen her channel or any of her videos, you are truly missing out. 
So go check her out. She is so sweet and creates so many fun projects over on her channel. She also has the Crafty Lini show that's on Saturdays at 7 p.m. on her channel. So be sure to check that out as well. And what I'm really excited for today is we are all doing a giveaway. We're giving away $80 in PayPal US dollars. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is leave a comment down in each one of our videos. And the giveaway closes Thursday, May 13th at 12 a.m. Good luck to all of you that are entering. Now let's get back into today's projects. For DIY number two, I'm gonna be creating a rag wreath. For this one, I'm using this wreath form from the Target Dollar Spot that I got a couple years ago, but it's just been sitting at my craft stash and I'm finally gonna be using it. It was $3, but what I loved about this is the chicken wire on the back reminded me of honeycomb, so I'm doing a bee theme. I'm using this bee fabric from Hobby Lobby and I'm cutting it into about inch or so thick strips and I just kept kept cutting the fabric down. They do not have to be exactly an inch or two thick. This is gonna be a messy rag wreath, so it's okay if all of your strips are not exact. I'm also using a burlap fabric. This fabric is from Hobby Lobby and it's actually a bandana. And I think these were only like 99 cents. So a really good deal if you check out the burlap bandanas from Hobby Lobby. I did the same thing. I cut the strips in about an inch or two in width and then just cut those down in strips. Then it was time to start creating my rag wreath. And I first started with my B fabric. I took a strip of fabric and tied it around the circle of my wreath form and just tied it in a knot. And I continued to do five of those strips of fabric and then I would do a burlap fabric. So I just continued to tie each strand of fabric around my wreath form and just kept doing that until I had the entire outside circle of my wreath form completely covered in fabric. Once that was all done, I then trimmed some of the extra long pieces of fabric, which ended up being my burlap fabric because I cut those a little bit too long in the beginning, so I just had to trim those down a little bit. Next, I'm using this unfinished wood plank. This one is from Michaels, but they do sell them at Dollar Tree as well. And I'm painting mine with my folk art chalk paint in the color Summer Porch, and I only had to do one coat of this paint. Then for this project, I'm also using unfinished wood letters that spell the words be kind. And I think these ones are from Meyer, but you can get these at pretty much any craft store. And I'm painting mine with my folk art chalk paint in the color rich black for each one of my letters. And what would be a project without me using a stencil? I feel like I've been using them a lot in my videos, but I just really love them so much. This bee stencil that I'm placing at the bottom of my plank is from Michaels, and I'll try to have it linked down below. I just centered it on the bottom portion of my wood plank, and then I'm stenciling the bee with my rich black chalk paint using my Dollar Tree stencil brush. Then once the paint was all dry, I removed the stencil. And then for my words, be kind, I'm placing them above my B that I just stenciled on. I like to get them in place so that they're all ready to be glued down. And then I'm just continuing by gluing each letter down. Then for the last step in this project, I needed some way to attach this sign to my wreath without just gluing it. So I ended up using two pieces of jute and I hot glued one at the bottom and one at the top of the back of my plank. And then I just took the pieces of jute and tied those around the back side of my wreath through the chicken wire. And here is my Be Kind rag wreath all finished. I love the bee themes for summer. And this rag wreath was super easy to create and it still fits with my farmhouse decor. Now moving into the third and final DIY for today, I'm using this wooden spindle that I picked up from Lowe's. You can get these in a few different colors. I just went with this white one here, even though I'm gonna be painting it. I'm also using this wooden finial. These come in a two pack at Lowe's for just under $3. And then also this bun foot that is just under $2 from Lowe's. And then I'm using this piece of wood that I got from Michaels. It is four inches and I believe it was 99 cents. And then this larger piece of wood, I think it was from Lowe's or Home Depot and it was about a dollar and it's five inches long. I first started this project by painting my spindle with my Waverly paint in the color plaster. 
I know you can't really tell on the video, but the plaster color has a little bit more yellowish tints to it, and I didn't want my piece to be so stark white. So I did one coat of this paint all over the spindle, and then while that was drying, I painted the other pieces. And I did use that plaster color on all of the remaining pieces for today's project. Then once that paint was all dry, I took my Castle Color chalk paint and a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I very lightly painted this around all of the edges of each one of my pieces to give them a distressed look. You guys could always skip this option, but I really like the way that distressing looks with this color of plaster. Next, I'm putting everything together. My spindle already had a hole pre-drilled into the very top of it and my bun foot already had a screw. So I'm just simply starting to take my bun foot and screw it into the very top of my spindle. When I got about halfway down, I placed hot glue in between the spindle and the bun foot and then just finished um, screwing that into the top of the spindle and this is gonna secure a hold. It is probably best to use a wood glue or E6000, but for the timely matter of making the video, I used hot glue. And I did glue the five inch and the four inch pieces of wood together, like you can see here. And then for the very top of my bun foot, this did not have a hole drilled into it. So I just used my drill to drill a hole in the center of it so that I now have a hole to screw in my finial for the very top. So I just placed hot glue on the bottom of my finial and then I screwed that into the hole I just drilled in the very top of my bun foot. Then I'm taking my hot glue, placing it on the very bottom of my spindle and placing that in the center of my pieces of wood. Then I just needed to add a piece of hardware. This uh, little hook is from Meyer, but they sell these at pretty much any store. And then with a little help from my puppy Cooper, I'm just attaching the hook to the very top of my spindle. I just did it with my hand screwdriver, but it would go a lot faster if you did it with a drill. Then just like one of my other pieces in today's video, I wanted to add a protective sealer. So I'm using the same one, the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer, and I'm just spraying a few coats of this all over my stand to make sure that it's all nice and sealed and it will not get damaged. And here is my stand all finished. I ended up placing a wreath on the hook, but you could always just put a sign on it as well. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Please be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And make sure to go in my description box so that you can head on over to Lainey's channel and check out her summer DIYs. Thank you so much for watching.